So this is our very last one of the four. This is the flexibility assessment. It is the one that I think people struggle with the most because as humans, we have this innate desire to go quickly. And in order to do this correctly, you want to have patience and you want to go slowly, slower than you actually think you need to go. So, and again, it's getting the position, uh, getting the treat in the right position. This is a full lure assessment. So you, and I would suggest you maybe get a, a treat that's a little bit bigger than normal. Um, and you want to put it in front of the dog's nose, right at the dog's nose, not so they have to reach it right at the dog's nose. That's what they're going to be following. And you want to have them starting in a good position with a nice neutral neck, nice level, level muzzle. Keep the treat right close to their nose and you want to keep it right as close to the body as you can as you start turning around and going as slow as possible. And the treat should stay somewhere around the level of the dog's spine. So they shouldn't have to tip their head down or tip their head up to turn. Now, if you see the dog struggle, you're going to go both directions, the right and the left. If you see your dog struggle, immediately stop. Um, and do make sure you're on a non-slip. A non You'll see a, I'm working on a yoga mat. It's important because the dog, every dog has a preferred side. One side will be easier to work than, than the other side. Again, when they get warmed up a little bit, it, it will come easier. So if your dog struggles, and, and I don't mean like struggles to the point of falling down, but if you see that there's an obvious resistance to turning, that's a struggle. Now you may be able to come back to it, uh, after you've done a couple, of, a couple of other things to warm up the back, but that's a tell, a tell for you. It tells you that there's tightness on, on that side. And again, one side will be, will be more flexible than the other. Same as us, you know, right-handed, left-handed. We tend to do things easier that way. Now, here's the caveat. If you have an older dog or a dog that has maybe some arthritis in his spine or arthritis in hips or shoulders or anything like that um, even into like for seriously into your senior and geriatric dogs please 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 be very sensitive to the fact that just like us they are stiff we don't want your dogs falling down they have to lift one foot off the ground at a time and for the senior dogs and for the older dogs, that is a challenge. That is maybe even an impossibility, but it's something that, um, that flexibility is something can, that can be improved regardless of what age the dog, the dog is at. So please be aware of that. Um, you want to, even if, they will start to turn their head. They'll start to turn their head like that. And they will, the older dogs will go as far as they possibly can and, and and if they can't go beyond that, that's okay because that's what you're going you're gonna to mark. So I want you to be very careful. If the dog flips around, now you won't see it with moment in the demo, you, there's a, a, a little bit of a flip, but if they flip, that like they fully, they don't bend, they don't do a pretzel thing. If they start to turn and all of a sudden they just go fling around with their back, that tells you that the back has some tightness some tightness in it. So that's what you're going to watch for and you want to be doing a full complete circle till they come all the way back, not end out over there, not the three-quarter cheating side. So with that, let's have a look. Okay, so this is the fourth of our, of our assessments. My shoes had dirt on them coming in. I gotta get the hanging hey, hey, relax. So what we're going to do is we start with the dog right in front of us and use a treat and you want to keep the treat right at the level of their back but really close to the body and very slowly now the biggest problem that people have is they go so fast the dog just flips around and you don't want to force the dog so we start in a stand just bring it around like that all the way back till the dog is straight so he went pretty easily right so i'm going to just move a little bit different angle so you can see it Try and keep them on the non-slip thing as much as possible because that makes a difference. So right at nose level, tight to the body. You see how he turns his back, he bends his back, and he comes back up. 
there's not much resistance going that way at all. So let me just switch over to the other side. So I want to show you something going the other way. I know, it's a lovely treat. These are my awesome treats. They're new uh, tuna, tuna and cheese. So with this, we're going to get them in the stand. We're going to go left. Now, are you watching how he shuffles around? Over there for a minute. Not coming in the right way. Right there. Use your nose. There we go. So straight. You're going to go left. See, he's fighting. He does not want to bend his back that direction because of that leg. Comes around and straight. You see that a little bit of a flip around? They fling their body around. So that's what you're noting. Which side? And every dog has a side that, that's a preferred side. So I'm going to do it one more time, each direction. Park. Thank you. Come around, nice and slow. You see, he's pushing, he's pushing, and then he's just going to flip around. So that's that's actually pretty ugly. So I know that that's that issue is turning to his left. That's his problem. And this, we're going to go park. Park means stand for him. So I'm going to come this way. See how much different, how much different that is? Okay, awesome job. And this is a, this is assessment. You see these, my dogs love doing that stuff and your dogs should too. You should be doing this. Um, all of these assessments, all four of these assessments every month at, at the very least, once every six months, because it gives you a great idea what's going on with your dog. Good job, buddy.